Um, and Lex, it's always a delight to hear you speak. Um, I always learn so much from you. Um, I hope we get to meet in person someday. I don't know, where are you based? I don't even know. Talk to me. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in, I'm located in Northwest Arkansas. If folks are familiar with it. Uh, you got Fayetteville and Bentonville. Walmart headquarters is out here. So that's usually people's association, um, unless it's college football. But yeah, no, located in Northwest Arkansas, Hunter. Um, I always appreciate seeing you. We have five acres out here in a spare bunkhouse. So the invite is open. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not one to turn down an invitation from people I admire. So <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, That's I will great. pass it over to you, Lex. Always a delight. And um, I'll be here if you need anything. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. Hunter, thank you, as always. And really, really excited um, about this conversation. And essentially, just to kind of do a quick introduction, if you all have not met me or heard me speak before, my name is Lex. I use they, them pronouns. Um, as Hunter helped me uh, call out, I am in Northwest Arkansas, Power Flies, a fully remote and global company. So I always kind of tell people where I'm at. And just a little bit of background about myself. You know, I really started in the DEAB professional setting about 12 years ago in the nonprofit development space, but pivoted to the e-commerce world and been at Power to Fly for about two and a half years. So this is really, um, really some of my favorite things to talk about, you know, kind of meshing some of my passions and experience and also kind of helping other folks that are working on these goals on how to create a more inclusive, diverse, equitable and uh, place of sense of belonging for people within the disability community. So again, I appreciate everybody for, for joining today. And I want to kind of kick off our conversation today to discuss why disability in the workplace and why companies um, should really be prioritizing the disability community. We'll talk more about what is, you know, the makeup of the disability community and why. But if we really think about, you know, the past few decades, conversations have really shifted from disability awareness to disability pride. This change in focus highlights that the disability culture is a natural part of human diversity and that disabilities are not a problem to be fixed rather than a vibrant community to be celebrated and supported. So when we talk about hiring and attracting individuals with disabilities, this is really an excellent way to add diversity to your workforce. People with disabilities have a unique viewpoint and experiences that can benefit the overall business by helping it grow and flourish. By welcoming disabled individuals into the workplace, you're creating a more inclusive environment and values in the that values diversity and promotes equity. Now there are over 1 billion people with disabilities worldwide who represent a significant consumer base. Not only can these folks be your clients, your partners, but also your employees. So by the by a, a essentially showing your commitment to the disability community, you can attract customers who essentially appreciate diversity and inclusion. Now, creating a workplace that is open to everyone, regardless of their abilities, demonstrates your commitment to social justice and equity. Now, this can help you establish a positive reputation within amongst the community of the disability community, but just across all communities, but also attracting customers and investors who share those values. We talk to a lot of companies who are trying to ensure that their DIB programming and metrics align with the overall industry, but also to really ensure that their DEIB data is organized. So as they're talking to business, other business owners or people in the community or investors, they're able to utilize and leverage everything that they're doing internally. Now, many countries require businesses to provide reasonable accommodations for people with disabilities. Here in the United States, a lot of folks might have heard of the ADA. By hiring people with disabilities and providing necessary adjustments, you can ensure compliance with these laws and prevent extensive legal battles. Now, I don't know if you all have done a Google search in a while, but there are record numbers of lawsuits filed over accessibility for people with disabilities. And as of right now, in the United States, California and New York are really taking the lead on those different lawsuits. So it really is important for us to focus and ensuring that we're creating an inclusive workplace for people with disabilities. Now, 
we've talked a lot, but to really just kind of hit it home, disability inclusion is vital for businesses that wish to um, essentially show their devotion to the disability community. By hiring people with disabilities, you can add diversity to the workforce, as we have mentioned, but tap into valuable consumer base, meet those corporate social responsibility goals, but also comply with legal obligations. So I encourage all business leaders to really consider the benefits of the disability inclusion, but also take steps to make sure that you're creating a more inclusive workplace. So now that we've kind of gone over why disability is important and why companies should really focus on this, like from an overall perspective, not necessarily just from consumers or partner, but from an overall perspective. Now I wanna provide a high overview of Power to Fly. Some folks might not understand, you know, all the things that Power to Fly does. And we're really gonna highlight what we're able to do for the disability community within our platform. All right, and I do see here in the chat that someone has wanted to hear a little bit about um, able to create ERGs in retail. Okay, so this is actually a great question, which will pivot right into what we'll be talking about as far as what our platform here at Power to Fly has to offer. All right, so with that, I am going to share my screen, and we're just going to go over real quickly about who and what Power to Fly is, and I will still be paying attention to the chat here. So when we talk about who and what Power to Fly is, as I mentioned, some folks may not be familiar, so we're just going to dive right into it. Power to Fly, in short, we work with companies that care to attract, hire, and retain underrepresented talent, and we do this by harnessing intersectionality. Now, real quick, what is intersectionality? A lot of people might see my they, them pronouns, which I get asked all the time, hey, come speak at our LGBT panel or one of our conversations around being non-binary and, and gender fluid. Well, I always tell folks I'm more than happy to, but I'm also someone who falls in the disability community. So we're always going to be harnessing that intersectionality lens where we're looking at all of the things that make a person diverse. And with that, that really comes with our approach to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace. And I really like this slide because I'm, I think it, the statistic nowadays is like almost 70% of people are visual learners. And I think this slide does a great job of visually showing our 360 holistic approach to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace, where we really do operate off of these four main pillars of attraction, hire, growth, and retention. But today, we're really going to discuss the, the growth and retention part of what that looks like from a disability lens in the workplace. But real quickly, you might have some folks go, hey, we don't have a whole lot of folks that you know are part of the disability community at the moment. We're actually looking for ways to attract and hire underrepresented talent that is a part of the disability community. And that is essentially where Power Pro would fall into. However, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on Power Pro today, but if you are interested in you know, diving deeper into the overall platform that we offer, I highly encourage you all to, you know, contact us or put um, your email in the chat and we can actually invite you to our live demo tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Time. And I will be leading that live demo and walking through the entire DEIB business suite, which incorporates Power Pro and Power Up. But for today's conversation, we're really gonna focus on what offerings are within Power Up and how that's going to boost the overall disability community. As you can see here, we really strive ourselves on having you know, a one-stop shop for all DEIB needs, especially when it comes to growing your knowledge around certain efforts from a, either internal or external lens. And to the, the point, in the question in the chat around how do we get ERGs kind of set up around these topics, regardless of the industry, this is actually where Power Up can come into hand and be extremely handy. So now you can see here on my screen that um, this is the Power Up platform that lives within our DEIB business suite. And you'll see here on the side, we have very, uh, we have the courses button, we have the news button, we have additional resources here. 
And we're gonna dive through a little bit of all of this. So right here, you'll see right at the top, my courses. What's really fantastic about these courses is not only do you have some really great DEIB knowledge, but you also have um, opportunities to get certified. So you get certifications with all these trainings. We have our SHRM credits as well that you can earn within the platform, depending on like which training that you want to uh, participate and take. So you can see here, you know, we have our DIB programming, DIB fundamentals, but what the main topic of today is, is disability in the workplace. So I'm actually the trainer on this training, which was really a blast and just something I was really excited and passionate about. But to the point of uh, really quickly just addressing the question around ERGs, the Power Up platform also has some really great, fantastic ERG information around leadership and management, ERG foundation, um, ERG implementation and advancement. And you can actually utilize all kinds of different courses and kind of combine what you learn to be able to apply exactly, you know, what you're want, wanting to uh, address, either it be a goal or need to be kind of proactive or reactive, depending on the situation, S some really great information here. So just real quickly, I want to go a lot further into disability in the workplace. So here, when we're clicking, you can actually see that I've completed the certification, and this is the certification that I was able to get. And if I was term certified, I would be able to, to collect these credits as well. Now, each module, you can actually kind of look through here real quickly, but each module has that video that you can play, and it will have me on there, and some really great information. And as you go through each module, you actually will have um, a quiz at the end of each of these modules. So it's a really great opportunity for folks to be able to go that, through this in real time. A couple of things I do wanna call out is we have some really great accessibility aspects of this tool as well. So you can actually follow along with the script and download it. We have closed captioning as well. You can make it full screen. And if you're like me, you can up it by times two speed if you want. So there's all kinds of really great information in here. I'm not gonna spoil the content too much because I would love to see you know, more people participate in this training. But as we're talking about all the things that are essentially incorporated in the Power Up platform, there's a lot of other things that can participate to um, internal or external efforts that focus on the disability community. So let's go over a couple of those things. Now on the main page, you can see we have a news breakout, we have a calendar highlight, resources and events. For example, I heard Hunter talking about the virtual job fair that we have tomorrow. So you can see that this actually prompts you to kind of participate in certain events that we're doing on a daily basis within the platform. But let's dive into a little bit of our resources. So when we're looking at the resources and the tools that are included here, one, I wanna highlight the DEIB calendar. Now, if you are familiar with the different dates that are associated with the disability community, right after the LGBT Pride Month in June, July is actually Disability Pride Month. We have our own flag with other colors that are associated. So I think it's a really good opportunity to ensure that as we're celebrating different Pride Months throughout the year, that we're inclusive on all of those Pride Months and be able to celebrate those folks who did all the hard work to get you know the disability community where they're at today and one of the ways to be able to honor that is through the deib calendar now there's a couple different things that i like to call out and quick takes so quick takes could be explaining the b and deib i think you know we can absolutely talk about diversity equity and inclusion but if we're not working together to create that sense of belonging for the disability community the work that you've done to create an inclusive place isn't really going to be as impactful if you're not consistently creating a sense of belonging within that. So there's great tools within the quick takes, as you can see here. Um, I think that there's a lot of different opportunities to even just kind of ensure that, you know, what is intentional inclusion, kind of what we just talked about, right? Creating that sense of belonging. Now, different reports that you would be able to utilize for the disability community may look you know something along these lines so we have diversity and intersectionality inside the diversity community disability activists and organizations 
this is a great report to share during Disability Pride Month in July. Now, as you can see, there's uh, other opportunities here to incorporate other aspects of either the disability community or the neurodivergent community, even just talking about mental health um, at, at the workplace here. Now, to jump to some of the templates, you know, kind of going back to the ERG question, we have a one year ERG template that could incorporate the Disability Pride Month in the month of July. You know, utilizing Power to Fly to have someone like myself come and speak to the company so folks could lean into empathy to learn through someone else's lived experience, or it could be an accessibility audit. I think this is crucial to create a workplace that's inclusive and creates a sense of belonging with people within the disability community is to ensure that the company has gone through an accessibility audit. So as you can see here, there's some really great resources that you can incorporate for the disability community. And one of the things that I just wanted to call out is as we are talking about the different training offerings, the different resources, templates, I think it's really, really important to ensure we talk about why ongoing DEIB training is important to the community. So. With that being said, we're just gonna dive in a little bit more of a conversation of what that can look like, you know, outside of, of slides and, and all the good stuff. So when we talk about the regular training is essential to ensure that all communities understand the value of diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Investing in trainings like that you, we've just kind of gone over with Empower Up, investing in training programs focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion of belonging can create a culture that welcomes and supports individuals with, within the disability community. Now, this can help break down barriers preventing disabled and individuals from succeeding in the workplace. Really, I just want to kind of hone back in on that accessibility audit. You've got to ensure that the company, either it be in a physical form or in a remote setting, is accessible for individuals with, with a part of the disability community. I think this shows that you're taking concrete steps to ensure that the workplace is accessible and welcoming everyone, regardless of their abilities. You might have some folks who don't disclose this upfront because they're not sure of the work that's happening internally around creating an inclusive uh, culture for the disability community. So really ensuring that you are taking those steps to create psychological safety within the workplace where you you do have staff, you know, that is being honest about the accommodations that they need in order to do their job. This can help build, as I just mentioned, the trust, you know, but also a sense of loyalty among employees, customers, and investors, as we discussed earlier. These are folks who will all appreciate your dedication to the social justice and equity. Now, we talk about this, you know, the creation of regular trainings and I think it's also important to call out that this can help identify and address any gaps in your workplace disability and inclusion policies and practices by regularly assessing your training programs and ensuring that you're making those adjustments. You can ensure that your workplace is always improving and evolving to meet the needs of all employees. Now we talked about how you know, boosting employer branding and attracting more people in the disability community can help support what you all are doing from a company-wide perspective. However, I want to just make sure it's really clear that I don't think that you should hire disabled, you know, people be just for that alone. You know, you don't want to put all the work on them to ensure that the company is inclusive and creating a, a, a successful environment. So I think, you know, another point is, is like, you can utilize a company like Power to Fly, either it be through our Power Up platform or even project-based consulting where we can be more hands-on through that accessibility audit. So I know we went through a ton of information. <laughs> um, so I definitely want to make sure that we're kind of also discussing about the resources that we can utilize and offer after today's conversation. So let's see. When we talk about just some of the different things that we can do as a company, when we get feedback from employees about what kind of training that they would like around the subject. So the first thing is to offer 
you know, that general training on disabilities to your staff so that people understand the subject in depth before giving any opinion or undergoing any more like particular training on that subject. Another option, you know, I mentioned we also do project-based consulting, which can really support anonymous surveys. Utilizing a partner like Power to Fly, like a third party, can really boost that psychological safety, ensuring that we're collecting all the correct feedback and also considering that maybe there are people on the team who still don't feel comfortable disclosing their disability, but have insight to share with the team on how to improve the company's accessibility policies. So really kind of depending on the team and, you know, what the company is doing, it, it's going to depend on like what's going to be appropriate for, for that next step, right? So <clears throat> there's a couple different ways. Say you're doing a bunch of hiring, you could incorporate a new employee survey. An employee's first 90 days of the job are really critical for that overall engagement and satisfaction. So sending them a new employee survey during the period to really ensure like is that onboarding experience accessible is there anything that we need to adjust or change during that process all right and i'm just quickly checking the chat but yeah and i think you know what was mentioned is like the kind of lip service during the onboarding, like I'll support you however you need, which turns back on to I'll support you until it becomes inconvenient for me. I think that's a great like example of why it's important to ensure uh, that folks have that at least training of like the basics of what it means to actually provide appropriate accommodations, but also to ensure that the company is like set up to accommodate those individuals. All right, so wanted to, to just kind of cover a couple, um, an, another question, you know, as many companies switch to remote, what are some other ways that we can ensure that the workplace remains accessible? We kind of talked a little bit about this, but to just kind of put it in a bullet point format, really ensuring that that accessibility audit is utilized to ensure that all content must be accessible. If your company's like policies, procedures, or events, onboarding processes, um, or even just like easily accessible ways to get plugged in with ERGs or other committees across the company, you really gotta ask like, is the content accessible rather than considering what actions might need to be taken after someone says like, hey, like I, I need X, Y, Z. It's always best to be proactive when it comes to the disability aspects of those efforts. And I'm just going to quickly touch base on like, we know that there are lots of lawsuits here in the United States around accessibility. And this goes way beyond just like a physical format of what accessibility is. This doesn't mean like, oh, we have a ramp and stairs. You have to ensure that all of your content is accessible, you know, from your digital products to your internal tools. Um, it's it's really important to do so. And also it, it is going to help everybody across the company. Like, I mean, one, it should boost uh, internal communications, but it's also going to boost that sense of belonging. Oh, you know, my manager made my job super easy and accessible for me to complete the task. That's really the end goal we're looking at. And with that being said, if someone can complete their task and their job in an easily accessible way, we're also ensuring the equity of opportunity by offering, you know, accessibility with their job. So therefore, like they can be successful in their job and you're therefore offering opportunities to promote that person um, throughout the company, depending on the different roles that are open, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I also wanted to make sure that we touch base, like, DEIB and the work that you will do around disability in the workplace, this does not necessarily mean it falls on the DEIB team or the ERGs or people operations. I would almost start directly providing a training option for your IT staff or anybody that is even kind of included in that IT product development because you don't want these folks to do so much work and then have to undo work. That's gonna be a lot of time and money. 
But at the same time, it is in best practice to ensure that everybody within the company has a good understanding of what accessibility means, especially as it pertains to their role within the company and their job tasks. So same with marketing, all content internal or external should be utilized in that sense. All right, so I'm just gonna take a quick look at the chat here, see if we got anything. All right, so I have a question here that there um, we have around nonprofits. I think a lot of what I've said today could be pertaining to nonprofit development. Power to Fly works with a lot of nonprofits, and what's really exciting, I understand nonprofits have a, a stricter budget, but I think what's really exciting about Power to Fly is you know we're happy to be flexible with folks, especially to ensure that you all are getting access to the information that's in Power Up. So if you all are interested in utilizing our platform, we have some really great promotional uh, pricing right now. So you know, I would encourage to inquire about that partnership sooner than later <laughs> to, to utilize that promotional pricing. Um, and then I wanted to just kind of, uh, maybe we can send this out afterwards, but we have some really great tools to kind of go ahead and do some research on what accessibility audits look like. So let's see we might be able to just send that out after the call because i know we are wrapping up here in the next few minutes but want to just make sure we've gone over everything um, as i mentioned any additional resources we'll share after this call and this will be everything from like uh website accessibility also to compliance audit reports also evaluation tools um, and then also just like uh, a website checker, you know, just to kind of see where you all fall on where we should prioritize this. Um, so definitely encourage to look at those resources after the call and reach out if you have any questions around Power to Fly, Power Up. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, I'm going to be doing a live demo tomorrow around our entire DEIB business suite which will go into Power Pro, which is around boosting employer branding and talent acquisition services, where we actually have opened up our talent search so you can directly try to recruit people within the disability community, or you can utilize our Power Up platform and utilize those on-demand trainings, resources, and templates. And if you have anybody within you know, your company or team that is SHRM certified, you can actually get those credits within the, the training courses. So I really hope all of this information was helpful. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll send over about eight different re tools for the uh, accessibility audit. I'm not sure here if I might be able to. Yeah, we're going to have to send that because I can't link anything in the chat. But We'll send that over to you all after this call. Um, I have about eight different links that we can send for the accessibility audit tools and references just to kind of back up some of the things that I discussed today. And also, you know, we do have the accessibility audit that we offer within Power Up as well. So definitely look forward to uh, answering any additional questions. All right, thank you. Thank you, Lex. Always a pleasure to hear and learn from you. So good to see you and watch out. I'm going to be showing up before you know it. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs>